All right. Here we are guys, I'm Joe from Archery World and Archery Northwest and I'm back with Joel Turner. Uh, we are going to do day two of the single string fling here at Archery World in Troutdale, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And uh, day one, you were the high qualifier with a 269. Uh, Joel with 311, so mm -hmm. that would make it a 272. Uh, two, so yeah, good yeah, man. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was wiggling yeah. my fingers. So, we're going to uh, mic Joel up again today. We're going to go through his shot process. He's going to uh, talk about that as we go. When he's downrange scoring yesterday, uh, was the mic was cutting in and out. We we're at the limits of how far it would stretch. Right. So, um, uh, when he's in a certain spot, he's going to be able to talk through you what he's doing, what right. he's going to do to change some things. Yeah. Uh, are you going to keep the same shot process you had yesterday? Yesterday, when we finished, you talked about possibly changing it. You're going to think about that. Yeah, so or, I, I'll just change my, I changed the internal trigger that I use. Okay, what are you going so, to do today? Basically today what I do is I, I put the air pocket in my cheek mm -hmm. instead of more internal in my, like between my teeth. So it'll be out in my cheek today. I don't know that you'll hear it in the mic today, maybe. You feel but, it. Yeah, but I feel it, yeah. yeah. So it's good. like your clicker, right? Yeah. So, speak, yeah. So. so I just basically form a, you'll see me, like if, if the camera's ever in front of me, you'll see me do that on my face, which basically makes a pocket, and then I just break that. I just gotcha. put pressure on my cheek till that pops. I don't care when it pops. That's my only job is to increase pressure on it till it breaks, and that right. sends a signal to my brain to let it go. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and we're going to get started right now. And I want to uh, thank you. Uh, Joel also is one of the uh, monetary sponsors for this. So we've taken all the fees that everyone's paid to shoot. They're going to get that paid back today uh, in different flights. And Joel added some for Shot IQ as well. So Chris is going to announce that. So let's turn to him. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah, buddy. First of all, I want to thank all of you for signing up for this shoot. I throw it every year just in hopes that you'll show up. It's kind of neat that Archer Real gives us a place to do this and that they give so much back to us, you know. They don't charge me anything. They actually pay back 80% of what we put into the tournament. So it's not about the money. It's about getting us all together and having fun. Um, a couple of rules that I didn't cover yesterday. I had a lot of questions about ties. So if there is a tie today, the tie goes to the person with the most X's. If you guys tie on X's in score, then you will have a one arrow shoot off to decide it, and that is it. Closest to center, it doesn't matter on the scoring. It's closest to center, and that's it. Um, and I think that's the only rule I had a lot of questions about was ties. Everybody's concerned about that. Today we're doing flights. You will shoot with your competition. On the top of each scorecard, I wrote what bail you're on for that group. It's not going to coincide with your bail target. I just wanted everybody to be in groups. Um, another thing that is new today, we had a good sponsor of Joel Turner with Shot IQ. He donated $200. I decided that. <laughs> cold hard cash. This isn't a check either. So I decided that that's going to go to the top male and the top female shooter today. It doesn't matter what flight you're in. If you shoot the top score, you will get that $100. So. <laughs> Other than that, it's going to be the same as yesterday. You're going to have one person scoring on the phone, one person on the cards, and one caller. Um, you should have groups of at least five. All the ladies, you will be in one group because there's only five of you, so the two flights will score together, okay? Um, other than that, I've already filled out your scorecards. I'm going to put them up by the bales after the first round, and uh, that's about it. Does anybody have any questions? All right, there will be two lines. The bottom line is first, top line second. Two practice rounds. Shoot as many as you can in the first round if you want. After that, don't remember it or don't forget it. <laughs> Hey, I, I hate doing this, so. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> All right, guys, let's have fun. This is a fun day. No pressure. Yeah, no, lots of pressure. <laughs> All right, so bottom line's up first. Let's get going. Let's go, Nolan. Oh, 
All right, so we're going to do two practice ins, and then no we'll start what, shooting for Mark. score. So there's going to be two lines today. Um, <laughs> And as you heard Chris mention that it's going to be flighted, so he broke it down into um, competitors that will be close to each other in score. The scores start at zero, so it's not an accumulated two-day score. Beauty. So yeah, yesterday good. was just qualifying score. That was and pretty. all we will do today is start at zero. Whoever is the top male and female shooter will receive $100 each, regardless of what flight they're in. So if you really put it together today, uh, you're going to walk away with an extra $100 on top of your normal purse. Beautiful. Good work. The practice rounds are always so good, aren't they? <laughs> Everybody's got jokes until it's for score. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Where do you weigh a whale? I don't know. At the whaleway station. What number, Kyle, Kyle, what number are you on? Yeah, this is... Here we go, Ryan. Oh, you're a lefty. We got oh, yeah, facey, man. facey, man. I'm going to be whispering sweet nothing. That'll be good. Yeah, there. that's good. During my practice ends, I like to save the center yeah. oh. for when it's for real. Yeah, yeah. I, like to, I like to just surround it. Circle the way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. I am here. Was that save the center? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take notes. Take notes. No matter what. Uh-huh. No matter what. Don't shoot them in the middle for crying out loud. All right, we're clear. The arrow just fell out of the bail down there. You guys are This is actually my best. Okay, practice in went pretty good. Had one eight and a nine and a couple of tens. 
and uh, a little shaky, but not too bad. Probably should drink some water, I imagine. I was going to shoot like a 277 today. I don't he's, doubt he's it. He's just roping us. Yeah? He sandbagged it out yesterday. Yep. Yeah, got himself in a lower flight. Oh, once he found out you were putting up money, he thought, I'm going to take this under all this. He can't have it. He can't have it back. Oh, he's Is fully still capable. Pretend? Yeah, still pretend. Try to keep it in that two minutes, guys. Go ahead. Just try. Just try. That's more like it, Nolan. That's what we like to see. <laughs> seven, sevens even, hopefully. I shot a seven my first arrow yesterday. <laughs> well, you got it out of the way now. There's another one. <laughs> Here we go. You got Crocs on? Yes, sir. I can't. That's just like the secret shoe. It really is. You can't use it in USA Archer. All right. I was going to protest, but I guess I'll let it slide this time. But is it only in the finals? Or is it all? Oh, really? Anywhere. Sport mode and they would look. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said no. They make closed toed ones, but they look like clogs. Yeah. Bodie wears them, right? Yeah, he put oh yeah. the spurs on them. Oh, yeah. Those steel toe crocs or what? Oh, yeah. Damn it. It's not considered a closed toed shoe, I guess, but that's a whole thing. I mean, could you put like those little gibbets? <laughs> fill them yeah, right. Gibbets uh, like, right. Basically, with a bunch of things that says, you know, FU USA Archery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you get sneakers that are just full of mesh. I know, right? They say it's not considered a closed toe, and I was like, well, can I just flip this around? These are considered. Okay guys, so make sure that we got our scores, signs, uh, that you're familiar with 
Shots are going pretty good, a little easier than yesterday. A uh, different trigger. And if I started holding at the bottom of the red, which is probably a little bit too low because I'm impacting the bottom of the 10, so I'm going to move it up a ring, so I'll hold right between the 7 and 8, which is basically right in the middle of the red below the target. And uh, that should get me good height. So we're about to start scoring, so here we go. Good luck, everybody. Let's go, Nolan. Do your job, my man. A marvelous round, gents. Go get him, big dog. All right, guys, let's here we go. Let's have some fun. Bottom line. Three arrows. This is your first scoring end. All right, go ahead. <laughs> That's the one that always makes me pee oh, my pants a little bit. <laughs> Tall, no, no tall. Good arrow, though. Well shot. Beautiful, beautiful. Good shot, man. Well done. Top, top, top line. Top line. Top line. <laughs> Excuse me, boss. All right, we're clear. 
So on that one I had two shots that went a little bit right. That's usually not enough front pressure for me. So I gotta be a little bit more aware of that. And I'll be good to go. It was a 987. First one went a little tall. And then I had a couple of them to the right. I can't tell from here. I don't have my binos with me, bro. Same spot. Amazing group, Nolan. Good shot, Nolan. Something. I got her down. Finally moved my cross. Oh, did you? One serving. Oh, jeez. Up on the middle on that one. Yeah, I'm gonna start up. Oh, All right, you're clear. Uh, clear. That was much better. I was much more aware of my front pressure on that. And <clears throat> actually shot one a little bit left, but two dead center, so that was good. It looks like my left one caught the nine as well. How do you hit two tens? And no X's. I need fatter arrows. Or I just need to shoot better. According to Nolan, I just need to shoot better. Yeah, let me shoot your 22 19s. They were pretty good. So how's it going so far? I hadn't been able to take a look because I was doing my first another first one I got a little uh, not aware enough on my front bow arm. And I shot when that happens I'll shoot to the right. Right. So I was more aware of it on my second end, shot a 10 10 9 on my second end, so awesome. much more centered up. But. All right, cool. So, yeah. And you're on top line right now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, what, I mean, it's funny because you watch, 
You watch people in practice and they're not like, everybody shoots good in their practice sets, right, but they don't practice for the adrenaline that's gonna hit them when it's for score. And this is, you know, not like Vegas or Lancaster or something like that, but people need to be practicing with the shakes that they have when the adrenaline hits their system. So, like when you see people in the practice line, you don't see anybody shooting on one foot. Right. I mean, as weird as that sounds, that's the perfect replication for how much I shake on my first end. Or I should say how much I used to shake. Right. Like I, I still shake a little bit on my first scoring end, but it's not near as bad as it used to be, but it's because I practice shooting on one foot. And like we were right. talking about yesterday, it's getting out to more competitions Absolutely. instead of, I mean, you gotta put the arrows in, you gotta practice, right. but you can't replicate that adrenaline you can. Um, any other way. Like you're saying, standing on one foot helps, but nothing, control learns to you don't learn to control it unless you're in that environment constantly yeah. so that's why you see all these pros go to so many competitions mm -hmm. so it's just another yeah. competition and, to yeah, them it's not a big to, deal you've got to learn from what you're what you're feeling what you're seeing if you're not learning from it you're not going to get any better at this yeah. right so as many turns as you can and then figure out how does the stress hit you where does it hit you does it hit you in your bow hand does it hit you in your release hand does it hit you where does it hit you? Does it hit you in your legs? You know, it's gonna put tension in your body somewhere. So you gotta figure that out. You gotta use the tournament to figure that out. And then that will change your practice regimen. Yeah, and while in the, the, I know you're getting ready to shoot, but we'll talk about this as we go. Uh, learning to do that, uh, even knocking your arrow can right. be hard to do when you have this sure. huge adrenaline rush. Absolutely. And, and uh, yeah. so you see that with people that are shooting, that right. are new shooters. So it's, right. I think it's your turn now. So All right. get up there. Wish me luck. <laughs> Those felt pretty good. A little bit, little bit rushed on, well not rushed, but uh, it took a little long, I should say. So the first one was a little stale, but still hit pretty good. I think I got them, I think I got them all in the gold, but we'll see. I stuck with it. So there's a point at which your shot gets so stale that you're not going to hit the gold. You have to know where that point is. But yeah. you have to understand why did it go stale. And it went stale because you're not loud enough in your head with the right words at the right moment. So, you know, in practice, I don't let down because in practice, I practice the fight, I practice getting loud. I use a stale shot to practice the skill of getting loud. So uh, when you're in your tournament, obviously if you've got time to do so, you can certainly let it down, but understand why you had to let it down. And usually you'll find that you were not loud enough in your head with the right words at the right moment. So um, don't just get in the habit of letting down and practice every time you every time it's going poorly or you detect an error because your subconscious will start to use that against you and it'll start to put that in your shot and you'll be letting down more than you actually shoot. So I know that the internet blows up when I say don't let down, but if you practice just letting down, 
every time you detect an error, it's gonna it's gonna get worse for you. So, so practice the fight. Who cares where it goes in practice, right? So just uh, work through it. All right. All right, Noam, let's go, buddy. All right, guys, you're good to go. Good nine, good nine. Nice, bro. Beautiful. That was beautiful, man. So, so it's, if you shoot to the right, it's your front pressure. It's front pressure. Because you can see, because your, your release is on those is, is coming out, and you're, it's dragging you over, the whole system over. So if you counteract that with a little bit more front pressure, you gotta be careful you don't do so much you blow it to the left. But yeah. but keep it straight, right? Alright, we're good to go, top line. Holy <laughs> smokes. Come on, sister, don't call it. Yeah, right. Nice timing, my sister. Yeah. So again, if you stop talking, you stop thinking. Yeah. Right? You just gotta talk. All right. Well, Joel's down range score, and let's go over a little bit of what happened yesterday to get everybody where they're at. So Joel, like we said, he was the top qualifier. He had a 269 with three. Um, He's uh, shooting, his closest competition is going to be Nolan Wilson. He had a 265 with three, so that's really tight. Uh, then Ryan Ulster had a 256 with four. Then you had James Benson that had a 253 with one. Uh, and it, 
kept going down the list. We'll show that list here in a second on film. And then the top qualifier for the women's, it was Pam Lang. Uh, she had a 252 with one. And then Leanne Mickelson had a 247 with one. So uh, they're going to be flighted up uh, together today, too. So let's uh, see if we can steal Dave's camera for a minute. And we'll see if we can show yesterday's qualifying scores. So you get to take a good look at that and you see who was here. So you, you can tell those top seven or eight men were really close to each other. And in bare bow competition, that's just really one, maybe two arrows difference there. Very similar like it comes down to in a, a freestyle competition with uh, the champions where one arrow makes the difference. Uh, and then the same thing with uh, the top three women there. So uh, Charlene Shelfer, she uh, unfortunately had a knife accident at home making dinner last night, so she had to drop out of it. She cut her finger, uh, so hopefully that was her bow hand, not her string hand, and uh, she'll be back up and ready for the Archery World Classic up in Lacey in December. And here's how we're flighted out. So this is the top on the left is the top four flights for the men so those flights are going to pay out that purse first and second in each flight will get paid out so first flight will be two hundred dollars for first and 158 for second and you can see the list go down there and the women because there were only five women shooting they they uh pitted pamela and leanne against each other so they're going to get 175 or 125 and 75 Plus, the top woman and the top man will receive an additional $100 for whoever shoots the highest score. So even if uh, you don't win any uh, first or second in your category, um, which you would gain an, an additional money, you're going to get an extra 100 bucks from Shot IQ because Joel Turner sponsored that. So, all right, they're coming back up range. So we'll get ready to shoot that next end. Go ahead and start. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ice. That's it. Blueprint it, bro. Well done, sir. Well done. Good shot, James. Well shot, sir. <laughs> Sorry. All right, top target but it went up or left. Nice shot, Ryan. Thank you, sir.
Second one is just below you. I think. Shot a decent group. Oh, one a little left. Clear, clear, clear. All right, guys, this is the fifth end. So after you pull your target or pull your arrows, go ahead and switch. All right, everybody, we're <laughs> to switch. We don't want none of those hit the wrong targets around here. Hmm. <laughs> we never. And also remember. This is Barbo. You're never out of it until it's over. All right. Bottom target. All right. Bottom target, Ryan. Bottom target. Bottom target. Yes, sir. Bottom target. <laughs> well done, sir. Thank you. Beauty. Mm -hmm. Good work. Battle of Titans, bro. <laughs> Good work, man. I just need to talk about 30s. Yeah, there you go. That yeah, yeah, just happens, man. <laughs> Nice group. Yeah, it was very nice. Well shot. Well shot. You never know on the first one. Like, is it is it going to be the same as the top target yeah. or not? You yeah. know. I mean, I'm really trying so. to like get to my position. Look at the. Yeah, you're good to go. Go ahead. Uh, just getting my position, holding on the top dot, because I know that I'm not going to be like. So a lot of times if I'm aiming low, I'll tend to short draw it. Mm. But by holding up the top and then doing So do you hold you draw back and you hold at the and you get everything set while set. you're at the top of the dot? At the, on the top target. Oh top target. And then do my tilt. And then you do your, a tilt to where your desire to aim is, and then what? And then keep on holding through the shot. Okay, so then you execute, right? Yeah. So just make sure that you're separating because any time that you have a what you call a flash out is when you allow your brain to be the trigger where you allow the, the aim to be the stimulus for your shot totally. right yes, so absolutely. so just know that's coming right your brain's always going to try to use the aim as the stimulus so just you know, however you set up and get your tensions in the right direction as Tom Thumb would say and then you drop it in but that's not permission to shoot yet no right right so it's don't this yeah so don't give yourself permission and the way that you don't give yourself permission is you gotta talk yes. if you're silent your thoughts will get louder than you're thinking and it just it doesn't go well right so no, I mean, so there's sister's calling I'm, and i'm like yeah, thinking about her yeah, on the phone yeah, so, like, you, Shit. so you've got an amazing shot but you gotta know how you did it right oh. don't ever be quiet during your shot there should be constant talking going on and your voice not what you're hearing what you are saying right i hear a little joel turner saying here there I go. you go good job no i said good job yeah <laughs> There 
Beauty. In front of the whole crowd, Nolan Wilson putting on a show. All right, so that is looking like some good shooting down range. So let's talk about where they're at right now. We just turned the half, so this is their sixth in that they're shooting right now. So um, this is not by flight, this is just by score today, but we're gonna show you how tight this is. So the top 11 men are only separated by 11 points. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the top seven men are only separated by 11 points. So uh, that is some really tight shooting right now. And based off of what I'm seeing downrange at that sixth end, they're not going to give anybody any slack. Um, you've got Pam with a 10-point lead on uh, Leanne right now, and so she's holding her off for the uh, time being. But again, since it's bare bow and... and Everyone knows how this works. You're shooting with fingers, no sights, using the tip of the arrow. Uh, one bad shot could cost you uh, the lead really fast or cost you several points. So to have that tight of a, a group up top on the men is pretty impressive. Um, so we don't know how this is going to turn out um, right now, but uh, based off of what I'm seeing in scores, you're going to be looking at uh, in the two, maybe possibly breaking 280 for the, the top male. So uh, we're hoping to see that. And again, if you're interested in seeing more of this, you know, like and subscribe to Archery Northwest. Share that with your friends that you know shoot. We are doing a bare bow competition this weekend, but next weekend it'll be a mixed uh, bag. So it'll be freestyle, bow hunter freestyle, uh, bare bow, you name it. Um, so we'll be going and traveling around the Northwest. We'll be back in Nampa, Idaho next weekend uh, for uh, hopefully uh, catching a little bit of a uh, a Vegas warm-up that they're putting on. They usually have about 100 shooters there. And then we hope to mid-November be in uh, Twin Falls at Advantage Archery filming a charity shoot that they put on there. It'll be their first one that they've done and um, for this specific event. And we'll try to collaborate with them to get that filmed as well. And that'll be a combination of shooters. This is a bare bow competition. If you want to see more of this or you want to participate in it, um, feel free, come down to Archery World here in Troutdale or any of the, the pro shops all throughout the Northwest and, and check them out and see what you can get involved with. Uh, to start out shooting bare bow, you could do that typically under $300 uh, and, and start shooting your bow. There's uh, actually a couple of uh, new archers here. So they're, uh, they're starting out, this is their first competition. I don't think they spent much more than $250, $300 getting set up. Uh, but as you get really sucked into it and you really get addicted to it, you can spend you know $1,000 getting your setup uh, the way that you want it. And you're always experimenting and playing with it um, if you're gonna shoot bare bow. It's the fastest growing genre in archery right now. It, it's still continuing to grow. And of course, uh, you see all these uh, anodized risers all over the, um, the range right now uh, a lot of people buy aluminum risers and then they have interchangeable limbs so the limbs have uh, an ilf limb fitting so they can change to any other brand that has that same limb fitting so it's a, a standard international standard that has been created decades ago so that you can shoot one company's riser which is the colored part of the bow and then you can shoot any other company's limbs so you'll see a combination of Hoyt, Yucca, you'll see um, Samic, you'll see Galaxy, you'll see all kinds of different um, qualities and styles of equipment. Um, most men and women like to shoot a 20 um, 7 inch 25 inch riser but they're coming out with 29 inch risers now and uh everything in between so what, are, what riser length are you shooting right now i'm shooting i'm shooting a 27 with 27. medium limbs so it's a 70 inch bow did you start with 27s or did you start with 25 i got a 25 first yeah and then the way that i've been shooting my crawls are really deep mm -hmm. so I, I in theory i was like okay i want less of a string angle for those deep crawls so i got two inches longer of a bow now and is yours a 29 27 but longs. 27. 72 okay. Inch. So a 70. 
And so the limbs come in three different lengths. They come in short, medium, and long. And the longer your riser is, the longer you can make the overall length of the bow. So 27s become a pretty hard standard now, but it started out at 25 when bare bow start, started to first surge again because Olympic recurves had a 25 inch riser. And now with bare bow and the crawls and all the things that um, the archers are talking about right now, it has grown the length of that riser through demand. And that wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. There just wasn't the demand to have it. But now you're finding people that are migrating from 25s to 27s and, uh, because it's, it's, yeah, and even 29s because it's more convenient for the style that they chose to do it. Um, and as you get longer in the riser, of course, the price goes up. So what does a 27-inch riser cost to something like you're shooting right I there? I mean, this is old technology. It's a G1. So I think when I bought it, it was like 500 for the riser about 600 for the limbs. Um, they don't make them anymore. And they moved to the GT, which has floating limb pockets. Um, that's kind of their new technology. Uh, I still like the snappiness of this riser. If I shoot medium limbs, it gets me a really good jump. So when I'm shooting outdoors, I'll go with a smaller bow, shorter limbs, more poundage, so I can get more distance. Indoors, I don't mind. I want stability. It doesn't need to be a fast arrow. It just needs to be a really stable hold. So. And that's very much like you hear. That's very much like you hear. Um, anyone shooting a compound bow talk about. When you're shooting inside, the poundage of the bow doesn't matter so much. The The weight of the arrow doesn't matter so much. So what he's describing there is he has a different setup for inside than he does outside. Because when you're shooting outside, you need to get the distance. Uh, you need to have maybe possibly a different arrow. So you might be able to get away with a little bit more inside, but you still have to shoot the correct spine to arrow because of the archer's paradox. Um, you can't get away with shooting a 27 diameter out of these like you can through a compound bow because the arrow moves differently. It, uh, it wiggles like a snake's crawl. So uh, that archer's paradox is a really important thing to deal with. So you always have to have the correct spined arrow. So taller people in shooting recurves can shoot a little bit bigger diameter arrow because that arrow needs to be stiff enough to fly right for them. Uh, you'll see and notice most of the archers here are shooting a small diameter arrow. Um, there's the largest one I see on the line right now is a PS23. Black Eagle is one of the few companies that makes multiple spines in their uh, large diameter arrows. Even in their PS26s and PS27s, you can get a 400, a 350 spine, and even stiffer. So uh, the key is is perfect flight when you're shooting with fingers because as that string rolls around an archer's finger, they can't control that at that point anymore. So they need a forgiving arrow. <laughs> yeah, this one pretty good. I think they're I think they're all gold. Still on the left side. Yeah, with that. Yeah, you're in there. You're talking to yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. I'm talking to whoever will listen, really. <laughs> I sometimes I just can't get off the string. Like I forget how to how to relax the hand. When I do that, then I just end up ripping it. So, so that's where that's probably where you then. This is where we have to shoot. Right? Yeah, so, relax. Yeah. So, like no the same so you have to understand where tension hits you with adrenaline. Yeah. Um, and then you got to kind of tune your bow accordingly. If you know that under more tension you shoot one direction or the other, you kind of got to be able to tune for that a little bit, right? Like maybe you have a couple clicks off or on on your on your uh, plunger, depending. Or if you get more aggressive with the front pressure, not a push, but just make sure that that tension is very directed yeah. into the X. And you know, you're gonna do that, so you, you're up above, and then when you come down, you've gotta realign that, because you're on the target you can't see yet. Then you come down, you're like, okay, there it is. That's when you would check it. And remember, you can put anything you want in your conversation. Yeah. It's your conversation, bro. So if you need to put, okay, check my tension, good, now I can proceed. Right. But shooting on command versus a, I mean, the thing is, is because you guys both shoot size Triggers, breaks, yeah. Which, I've never shot a clicker. I yeah. definitely consider like moving over to that mm -hmm. so that I can get that motor program built first. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then so, try to figure so out. So in your in, in shooting a triggerless method, have you seen the safety concept yet? No. So on the online course there's a safety what I call the safety concept and it's 
It's doing a physical movement after the aim and after you've tensioned up. Right. A physical movement that requires conscious thought, like taking your finger off the bow, mm -hmm. right? A finger, wiggling your big toe. It could be anything, yeah. right? As long as it requires conscious thought. And, and that, right, that. Right. And that breaks, you, yeah. breaks you off the threat lock of the aim. Right. And then you just talk about the hold. Right. And what do you say? You would say whatever you would say to somebody that's hanging off a cliff and you don't want them to let go, right? right? And then when you get to the calmness, that's when you're allowed to shoot, right? As long as it's within three seconds, right? That's a, you say well, that, like, as far as the shot going stale and then you talk yeah, about Yeah, that's, that. that's a personal thing, because I don't shoot in three seconds. No, that's true. <laughs> you don't want to talk to the people? What do you have to say to the people? Just tell them that I'm amazing and that's all you need to say. You're amazing. See that? Look at that. Alright guys. went to the right. Yeah, yeah. My other ones, they were, I left them out in the sun and they shrunk up like two sizes. <laughs> Supposedly you can put them in like boiling water and stretch them out. <laughs> and they just go right back to normal, huh? You can no. put them in boiling water. You gotta get your feet in. Oh, geez. Yeah, that's no good. Right. Right. Yeah. Under the sun. Sounds like a good way to burn your feet. So Ryan, one of the one of the big things that we do now is commentary shooting, like shooting out loud. Yeah. Like once you get the full draw, you're not allowed to stop talking. And then you really find out what you say. And that's that's pretty freaking helpful. As you're running the shot? As you are shooting. Like wow. okay, so I'm drawing back, okay, I'm setting up on the top target. Okay, now I'm dropping down to the bottom target. Okay, yeah, and that's good. Got my aim, okay, now I'm adding some tension to the system. Okay, here I go. I'm saying here I go to increase my presence. And you always talk like you're teaching. Yeah. Right? 
because then when you're when that conversation gets easy, then you understand how you do what you do. Yeah. Right. So don't and be afraid to. So make sure you're talking out loud on some yeah. of your training shots Which I've to done. to really figure out how you do what you do. Right. Yeah. Ooh. I want to catch. All right, Megan, let's talk uh, just a minute about the Archer World Classic. Uh -huh. um, so the Classic is coming up on December 6th through the 8th up in Lacey, Washington at the Archer World location. Uh, so uh, let's tell everybody about it, the prizes. I know we're giving away about $20,000 in cash and prizes. We're hoping to break how many? Uh, uh, about 250 participants is our hope um, that'll be max capacity for our uh, location up in Lacey uh, right now we're just over halfway there with another month left of registration to go um, I believe we still bare bow is still our number one category signed up um, we do have a, a championship class that includes both uh, male and female uh, but something fun that we kind of did different is uh, anybody who has to kind of shoot up a division, uh, meaning that their natural division isn't offered, uh, they're going to get an extra 10% payout. So if you're a woman and you are shooting in the championship class because we don't have a female championship class and you place in first, second, or third, you're going to get an additional 10% payout. And, and you know what that first place is for championship? Oh, gosh, I... $2,500 guaranteed yeah, or $3,000 guaranteed right now. So, uh, and as that that uh, division grows, it may exceed that as well. Yeah, so, in future years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, so that's the hope. And all the other divisions are going to pay out based on their, their performance. So, um, How many participants yeah. are in that division yeah. uh, will get uh, the majority of that payout yeah. back. So and last year's payout for Bear Bow Men, for example, was around eleven or twelve hundred dollars for first place yep. uh, because they had, you know, twenty or thirty people participating. So we're hoping yep. to get to two twenty five, two fifty this year. If we do that, we'll try to find a venue next year so that we'll be able to grow it even larger. We're trying to do this shoot uh, to uh, celebrate Lancaster's the Lancaster Classic so we follow that same style format. Uh, we do we shoot four in the shoot up instead of the eight finals that they do. That's the main difference right now and as it grows uh, and gets larger we'll probably make some adjustments to that as well. Uh, so it's a really good time. It's uh, you qualify on either Friday or Saturday and if you make the qualification rounds or your shoot for score then you go through the uh, brackets and if you make it through the brackets then you're shooting on Sunday uh, in the finals. That's correct. And Sunday is a jam-packed day. Um, we will be live the majority of the day on Sunday for anyone who wants to follow along. And we always have scores live on our website as well uh, for the qualification rounds as well as the brackets. And then for the shoot-ups, uh, we're always live through the whole thing. So we really try to have a good time and uh, get to know the shooters and um, their equipment and um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yep. So uh, we appreciate everyone uh, watching this right now. So uh, stand by. We're going to go into the next round. It's really tight right now. I think that at the half, the top seven men were 11 points apart, and then awesome. uh, the women were neck and neck also. That's great. All right. A lot of arrows through this thing. Still oh, yeah. Bottom line up. Bottom line. A lot of dead critters, too. Yeah. Seems to be working out pretty good.
Do I got a couple X's? Maybe. I think one's a low nine, I think. Yeah. That one's an eight, though, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Why I, I don't know. <laughs> I was hoping. I was hoping, but I know better. <laughs> Thanks for telling it to me straight, Nolan. We got one more. Yeah. I don't know what the other ones are, but. Can you see? What are they? What's that? Alright, we're good to go. Mark now. <laughs> we know that's a losing race. <laughs> yeah. No I reason. Know you, I know you were talking about me. <laughs> so I said earlier, Mark's trying to get the all the uh, early off the line bonus points. <laughs> he thinks that a good time is extra points. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'd like to I'd like to tally up all my extra bonus points at the end. <laughs> Excuse me, Cal. Let's all start chanting. Breath, breath. Yeah. All right, we're clear. All right. After that, give us a little time to write checks and get ready, and then we'll do the awards.
Dying it to death. How we do, Mama? <laughs> I'm trying to like see your target. You got a 11? Maybe on the line of the 10 and the 9. So maybe like an 11, 10, 9? Yeah, but if not, definitely 11, 9, 9. Okay. The 10. Oh, maybe. I think it cuts the line. Yeah, okay. The 10. That's cool. Good end. That's cool. All right. We're going to... This is the last end that you just shot, right? Yes, sir. So let's talk about this. I know a couple of people asked this question. Yeah, we'll do it and then walk down. And, and But let's uh, talk about this. Uh, there's been a couple of questions about why you're right-handed and shooting a left-handed bow. So let's let's explain this to a little bit. All right. So Because it's unorthodox, right? So you wouldn't there. recommend this to very many people. Uh, yeah. I would sus suspect because yeah. it works for you, it might not work for everyone. Right. So, what's your mentality and why are you shooting it this weekend? So, I've been shooting. I, the reason the arrow's on the other side of the bow is because I shoot with my thumb instead of my fingers. Mm -hmm. thumb, thumb rings are illegal in competition. Thumb tabs, however, is just a tab that goes on my thumb. That is legal. Um, I do it because it gives me two more inches of draw length as opposed to where I'm at with my fingers, which allows me, because I've got some different shaped arms. Um, which, yeah, I'm kind of a T-Rex kind of guy. So it gives me way better alignment, where I'm not having to muscle things so much. So with my thumb, I can actually draw that thing back, and I can kind of cam my shoulder over to hold that, which is a big deal when we're trying to hold 38, 45, whatever, how many pounds you're shooting. So that's one thing. The sight picture is the next. And the reason the arrow's on the other side of the bow is because my knock is not in line with my eye. It's over here. Mm -hmm. But all I've done is basically take a bow that's left-handed, essentially, and it's so far past center that it aligns. So I can still put my point, just like everybody else is putting their point directly underneath the spot, I'm doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. But this, the way that bow is set up, it allows me to do it with my knock having, not having to be aligned with my eyeball. Right. So it's an ancient way of shooting. It's kind of how archery started, right? right. It, was, it was for mounted archery and all those things. So I've just taken an ancient technique and put it into modern equipment. Right. Well, the first rule that you cannot break is if you're gonna shoot with your thumb, the bow's shelf has to be on the same side as the thumb is pointing. Well, yeah, right? I mean, it, you, you can shoot a right-handed bow. Mm -hmm. But to do that, you have to either cant your bow significantly to get the air underneath, right. yeah, mm -hmm. you underneath your eyes. So I just choose to yeah. shoot a left-handed bow. And I only so. shoot, when I shoot a recurve, I only shoot instinctively and I'm left eye dominant. So mm -hmm. I have to overly cant a right-handed bow to get uh, it in line oh, with yeah, the way I sure. want. So for my sure. cant is going to be about 10 degrees more than the average person's sure. because I'm left eye dominant and I shoot with both eyes open. If yeah. I close an eye, of course, I'm immediately dominant yeah. eye on whichever one's left yeah. open. Most people in the bare bow game are string walking. So mm -hmm. they're actually coming down below their string, but that puts their, their knock in line with their eye. Mm -hmm. And that's great for most folks, but with my forearm length as opposed to my upper arm length, my alignment is garbage. And so when I shoot my fingers, I have to constantly muscle it. Gotcha. And I've found it to be not quite as accurate for me as when I shoot with my thumb. And it's that simple. So it's not for everyone. Right. It's for people that can you excel at it because you've learned that about yourself. So you can't just pick up a bow for the first time and cause right. Joel shoots thumb and left-handed right. bows right-handed. Right. Yeah. You can't necessarily so in, do that. I'm in my 13th year of thumb right. shooting and I'm still learning. Right. right. So it's it's a constant constant journey, but. I love it. And how often do you go back? One last question before you go down and score this last mm -hmm. end. How often do you go back shooting fingers, right-handed, right-handed bow, just to oh, kind of compare to see if day. anything has changed? Every day. So I you, shoot probably at least four different types of bows a day, all day long. And is it just to keep <laughs> getting a little better in each of those styles yeah, or it, to compare them to it each does, other? It does, but I'm constantly comparing, right? Okay. And then you got to bring it to the tournament because you don't really know until you bring it to the tournament. Right. So. So there's no one way to skin the cat. No. So that, that's what we're trying to get yeah. at is here. And, and that explains hopefully why he's doing what he's doing right yeah. now. And it seems out of place compared to what everyone else is doing yeah. because they either are afraid to take that leap to try or they are shooting and gaining the ground, ground they want in the genre and the style they're right. trying to shoot to begin right. with. Yep. It's so. super fun, right. no matter how it goes. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, okay. There's always seems to be, you know what I mean, that flash, like, mm -hmm. and just, I just don't those are the ones you, you stop 
talking. Yeah. So I'm telling I you. I gotta get louder. Go do some commentary. I thought that was a great idea as far as doing the. Go do some commentary shooting. Yeah. Right? I think that's an awesome idea. And then, yeah, so that's basically I teach people how to do that in my new Mind IQ course yeah. for sports, yeah. right? And for anxiety attacks and all that stuff. But I've got some really cool drills in there to teach you how to get loud, yeah. like what it means and what it feels like to actually get loud. Yeah. And then all we're doing is figuring out how to get loud with the right words at the right moment. So you got to figure out what your conversation sounds like. And the only way to do that is to talk out loud. But always don't search for words. Talk like you're teaching. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us when you're done. Right? Okay, I'm drawing back and aiming. Got it. Okay, now I'm tensioning up. Got it. Right? Put got it or done at the end of it to really separate the steps. Right? Period. Draw back and aim. Got it. Tension up. Got it. Okay, now I'm going to say, here I go to increase my presence. Here I go. Hold on. Hold on. Not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. Stay in it. Stay in it. Right? You're talking yourself through the hold. What would you say to a loved one that's hanging off a cliff and you don't want them to let go? Because you're climbing the hill, right? The whole time. Not yet. No, no, no. Hold on. Check your tension. Tension's good. Okay, all that's good. As soon as you crest the hill, it's calmness. It's like, I could shoot or not, right? That's what you're looking for. Always in training, always climbing the hill to get to the top. Yeah. That's where calmness lives. Don't ever shoot until you're proud of it, yeah. right? You can never shoot until you're proud of the hold, not of the result. Yeah. You've got to be proud of the hold. It's uh, and I totally agree. Like I'm, I, I, I believe you're on a really special path, and it, like definitely helps. Like I, mean, yeah. I hear your voice, you know, as I'm working on it. But it's also like, you know, again, it's, it's a, it's a, it's not something that comes easy. The shot that you're shooting, a, a triggerless barebow shot, is the hardest thing that there is for the human mind to comprehend. That's why I have such respect for folks that shoot really well triggerless, like yourself. I can shoot triggerless. I've shot in the 280s triggerless, but it's not as consistent because my pre-ignition movement, if I shoot my fingers, my pre-ignition movement is a little bit too big. So if I have a bad one, it's going in a right six, yeah. right? And I can't have that. Yeah. So now if I have a, if I have a, a shot that's not quite as good, still a right nine, maybe an eight, right? So it's, uh, it is, yeah, I mean, what we're doing, people don't realize how difficult this is in the level of concentration. Like, I mean, I've trained professional sports teams. It's nothing compared to a triggerless barebow shot. Nothing. And, and the next level is a trigger barebow shot, right? It's not as, it's not as hard. Uh, but you got to be able to stay in that one task. Right? Yeah, and it's trying to find, I mean, everybody has that different method. I know that you talked about using the bubble for mm-hmm. a long time. Here, yeah. You know, and then, and then moving over to when you were shooting with your tab. Mm-hmm. You yeah, had, tabs here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, has a sear on I still, When I shoot my fingers, I still shoot a tab sear. Yeah, you got when it. I shoot with my thumb, I, I can't find any sear system that is as accurate as an internal trigger. Yeah. Like I shot the last two days internal. I shot Lancaster and Vegas last year internal. Yeah. Still searching for the perfect internal trigger. Today was better than yesterday. Um, using his finger on yeah, the, so he shoots a grip sear. Same with Kaminsky. Yeah, does. and we're work, we're still working on stuff for that. Like I found it this past week, much easier to travel along a surface and fall into a notch than put it in the notch and try to pop out of it. Right. Right. Yeah, right. So there's I'm Sorry. constantly learning this stuff. All right. So they finished their last end right now. What we're going to do next is they're going to tab, uh, they're going to add up all the scores. They're going to make sure that they've got everything set for all the flight payouts and make sure everybody's set on that. So we'll sign off real quick, and then we'll come back with the final scores and all the uh, prizes that are going to be given away. We're back. All the shooting is over except for one arrow from two archers. So Kyle and Ryan are going to have a one-arrow shoot-off for the shot iq hundred dollars cash um joel actually qualified highest so he we wouldn't let him give the money to himself (laughs) so we we got uh kyle shot up from the second flight though and he still had the highest uh the second highest score of the day and then ryan was right behind him so they're going to do a one arrow shoot off for a hundred dollars straight cash and then it's going everything else will be broken down into flights chris is prepared for that but we want to see how this turns out here 
everybody will be watching them, so we'll put as much pressure on them as we can. <laughs> They came to the two second highest score. It was Ryan and Kyle shot his way up from the flat below. So that's why I did that. It gave him a chance to get into that money now. So this is a one arrow shoot off. Closest to center. I'll let you guys pick your targets and go ahead when you're ready. Let's go. Oh, they won't even face each other. <laughs> <laughs> the animosity is high. I'm nervous. I beat my pants a little bit. <laughs> Second top scorer. Pamela was the top scorer of the field. All right, that's the shot I threw my at first yesterday. And a top woman. And I think we're getting ready to do the awards now. So, so the second flight in the women's for second place is Kyla with sixty dollars. There you go. And then first place in the second fight with the ladies, with the ladies is Alicia with $76. So, congratulations. First fight with the ladies, I just paid the first and second and let them fight it out. So the second place is Leanne and she will get $75. Yes. Didn't I do that to you last year? Thank you. Yeah, we'll be good so fast. And then first place is Pamela and she'll take home 125 In the fourth, fourth flight, in second, second place is Francisco, and he gets $75. Yeah. 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 Thanks for coming. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And first place, our heavy hitter here, we always bring him in to take you guys out. Cold press. Congratulations, you are way ahead of everybody. Colton's going to be the force to reckon with. Look at that belt buckle. Keep them nine, Sharp One. Keep them nine. And he won by quite a bit. Oh, you got it. All right. Third, Third flight, flight in second, second place, all the way from Idaho, Idaho we have Rand Hill. Hill. For $80, that'll get into the Anchor City. <laughs> <laughs> Third flight in second place, all the way from
Appreciate you guys watching. This is Archer Northwest. We're going to sign off. Thanks again.